Hello Pisces, welcome to Lotus Heart Tarot. I am so excited to have you guys here. I have a fun little announcement to make. Um, a, a couple of months ago, a deck creator reached out to me and asked me if she could send me her new deck and if I would use it on my channel. And um, she sent me a link to the deck and it's beautiful and I am very honored to have even been approached. And, um, and then when I saw the beauty of the deck and um, had, you know, spoke with her, it was um, just such an honor. She's a really wonderful person. She actually sent me three decks um right away but they got lost in France and never made it to the United States they're from Germany and um so she had to resend them and here I finally got them and I'm so happy to show them to you I'm so happy to be able to use them in this reading and I do want to announce that she did send three decks so I am doing a giveaway I'm going to be giving away one of these decks so I will unbox it and show it to you um but if you are interested in the giveaway, I'll be giving away first one box and you can enter to win to the giveaway by being a subscriber of the channel and by commenting something about the angel cards or angels. Um, if you are a member of my membership channel, you will get two entries for every comment that you make. I'll be doing this over the course of three videos. So you'll get an entry for each comment that you make. Unless you're a subscriber, you will get two entries. And then I will be selecting the winner and sharing that with you in a, in a community post, um, I think next Tuesday, all right? So let me just open this box and show you these beautiful cards. They're called Messages from the Angel World. They are available on Amazon. Um, they come with this beautiful little guidebook. I love the messages. They're not super long, but they are. They pack a big punch. I think these cards would be very useful for you to read for yourself. Um, and the imagery is just beautiful. I love angel cards, um, and these are really beautiful. And they do have to do with love, and they are gorgeous. Um, but I think they're really, they could be very insightful. Um, for if you were just wanting to pull a card for yourself. Um, so we are going to be using these today in today's reading. Um, they shuffle very nicely. They have a beautiful texture, a beautiful feel to them. They're not sticky in any way. They're not slippery in any way. They're just right, really. Um, and they're not too big. They fit nicely in the hand. They're really nice. Um, and, you know, as a Libra, I love the back image. <laughs> Lady Justice. Okay. So we're going to dive right into the reading at this point. And um, I'll try to remind you at the end about how to enter to win a deck, a beautiful deck of messages from the angel world. There's 44 cards in the deck. And I will try to put a link to the Amazon um, store that has them in the description box or in the comments, okay? If I don't and you're interested, remind me, please. Okay. If you are new to the channel, welcome, welcome. I'm very happy to have you here. Um, we are... We are doing general readings here on the channel, so um, just take what resonates and leave the rest, all right? Gosh, guys, I wanted to make sure that I got everything out, and it, it I'm, you know, all right. I'm the queen of a two-second intro. Okay, here we go. For Pisces, for Pisces, please, Spirit, what can you show us? For Pisces, for Pisces. Okay. Okay, Pisces. Wow, the end is near. This is a theme that has 
been recurring um, over and over and over again. There is some kind of ending that is taking place for you here, Pisces. And with every ending, that means there is a new beginning. Um, okay. So you have the end is near. And I will just read that to you. This situation in your life is near its end. After it disappears completely, something utterly new and beautiful is waiting for you. The new special thing will enrich your life very much. Each end is the beginning of something new. Seek solitude, peace, <clears throat> and silence in this transitional period, which can also be painful for you. Try to connect with yourself every day and restore contact with your own power. Look for loneliness and consciously cleanse this situation by bringing forgiveness, blessing, and love into it. Anticipate the arrival of something exciting and open yourself to new things. Separate yourself from negative emotions and enjoy your life. Imagine all the beautiful things that are to come and what your life should look like for you to be happy. This card wants to tell you to accept the endings throughout life or to end the situation yourself. Ask yourself if there's one thing in your life that should be brought to an end. If you expect the end in some areas of life, get well prepared for it. So, you know, this card is even encouraging you to look at your own life and to ask yourself, you know, is there something that I should be bringing to an end? Is there something that may be lowering my vibration instead of raising my vibration? You know, um, and this is an important question to ask ourselves you know sometimes we will be betrayed but we will see it coming you know we will see the signs that it's coming and you know we are human and we do want connection and we do crave love and so sometimes you know we will tell ourselves oh maybe i'm wrong or maybe i'm overthinking it or maybe i'm overreacting or maybe this or maybe that um, only to have that sting of the ultimate betrayal and then the sting of, man, I actually kind of saw this coming. Man, I actually saw the red flags. And that feeling that we get of, wow, I, I kind of almost betrayed myself there because I saw it coming, you know? Um, so I feel like, you know, it is such a healthy thing to ask ourselves, you know, is this fulfilling me? Do I feel better when I spend my time here or not, you know? And then you are getting, because especially you guys have been getting this a lot, and it is about clearing space for new things to come in. You have very soon. The answer to your question is very soon. Be patient for a while. Have faith and hope. Keep praying and stay optimistic. The time has come. Your wishes will come true. Your prayers have been heard. You have already come, overcome a lot of suffering and pain. The bad period of your life is coming to an end. Expect a positive development of this situation. You will rejoice again very soon. So definitely a repeating message here, you guys, not just today in this reading, but this has been coming out for you for a while. Um, and then you have this beautiful hope card. I really like this card. You have been through a lot of disappointments. Now you need to restore your faith and confidence and focus on success. You must get rid of everything that makes you feel negative in life. Trust your intuition and listen to the voice of your heart. This card can also signal that not everything is lost and that you still have hope for a positive twist in this situation. Do not stop believing. There is always a solution for every situation in human life. Look at the world cheerfully and optimistically. You should expect good and happy ending of all events. Whatever you expect, that will happen. And then you have the creator of life card. This card points out that your life is not in your hands and that you have been in the role of a victim for a long time. Become the master of your life. Stop sacrificing yourself for others, being controlled and manipulated by guilt, regret, and fear. Your own inner self should be the most important person for you. Recognize your true value and know who you are. Love deeply, but give and expect independence. Find your passion and be creative. Only you have the power to change your life. Start creating your own destiny. And then you have no. The answer to this question is no. Reevaluate the whole situation. 
So, um, you know, whenever I get a card like that, you know, I have to clarify it. So I am going to clarify it. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and pull some tarot on it right off the bat. We're jumping in. We're going rogue people, but aren't these cards just beautiful? I just absolutely love them. I would be happy to buy them. Um, you know, but I am just so happy to receive them. Whenever you receive something as a gift, it holds more power, especially when it comes to cards. And so um, I'm happy to be able to be giving, gifting these to you guys um, because of the generosity of the deck creator sending me extra cards um, and choosing me and sending me anyway. Okay, there's definitely something ending here. There's someone who's been in and out of your life and, you know, you have the Nine of Pentacles and the Knave of Wands. And this is just, it's an energy here. And it has, you have the Three of Swords and the Death card. On the bottom of the deck, you have the King of Chalices. You know, for me, this is telling me this is the situation where the whole, maybe the purpose this soulmate came into your life was to help you master your own emotions, to help you, um, you know, be able to have your deep and strong feelings, but not kind of react to them or not let them sort of run your ship. You know, what I mean when I say that, they specifically is what I'm being shown is that, you know, when you say, but I love this person, but I love this person, this person is tearing me apart from the inside out, but I love them, but I see the good in them, but I see the potential in them, but I, but it's tearing me apart from the inside out, three of swords, death card. Um, but, and, and it shows, you know, you're showing up in the nine of pentacles, Pisces, you have it together. You have everything that you need. And then you have this person who comes in and either triggers existing unhealed wounds or has kind of really put some of that wounding there, you know, has inflicted some of the damage it, it with the death card coming with the three of swords. It feels like this is final. Um, it feels like this is for the last time. It's it, it may even be you with you and it may be you, you know, asking yourself with the end is near card. Is there something in my life that should end? We don't have to wait for someone else to bring the ending about, you know, is this one of those things where, and, and even when you have the death card here, right? It, it's just like with the end is near the death that it can be the ending that leads to a rebirth that leads to a new beginning, but you can't energetically leave a door open. That is like this, where you have someone coming in and out where you're basically solid, you're basically stable and you're able to manifest and attract what you want, but there's someone who keeps coming into your life and sort of wreaking habit, sort of tearing you apart from the inside out. It just keeps giving me that phrase. And so with the death card here, it's like no matter what, this phase of this relationship, whether it's just the chapter ending or the whole book ending, you have to, you can't just keep leaving yourself open to be hurt this way, um, is, is how it's giving me. It's like this is not, this cannot even be alchemized into something better or different in its current form. It has to be completely ended and completely, you know, restarted or let go of in order to set yourself free of this suffering. And with the King of Cups on the bottom of the deck, it really is telling me that the entire process of this relationship has helped you master your own emotions, has helped you to see possibly even that even if you love someone else, you have to love yourself first and you have to love yourself most and best. And you have to keep that your central priority, you know, and, and you can love someone, but if they're tearing you apart from the inside out, it is not a loving thing to do to yourself to keep that energetic doorway open. So you, you know, this is one of those things where it's like, all right, I will close it. I will, you know, cut the energetic cord. I will, I will do whatever it is that I have to do. Even tell myself, okay, but this is not healthy for you. Whenever that thought of, but I love them, but I'm longing for them. But no, you're not longing for the pain. You're not longing for suffering. 
We're not masochistic people. We're spiritual beings having a human experience. And people do come into our lives for a reason. And it can be that this person is a soulmate and that this person's purpose was to help you understand and master your own emotions and understand that, first of all, you must master the love of self. Um, you know, with the Nine of Pentacles here, you have mastered something in the material world. You have figured that out. You know what you're doing there. Um, but emotionally, it feels like there is this energy of maybe prioritizing other people that was in one of the cards that you did get, one of these angel cards, was talking about how you know, you know, uh, uh, like kind of opening ourselves, allowing ourselves to be manipulated um, by, by people who don't have our best interests at heart, you know? <clears throat> All right, so that is the no. All right. It would have to be completely reborn in another energy for it to be able to move beyond where it is. You have iced out, left questioning it all, ghosted, abandonment wounds, heart thawing out, recent breakup, unanswered messages, emotionally distant. I feel like someone pulled away from you. I feel like someone became emotionally distant. I don't know why I'm picking up on the energy of cancer there. I don't know. I don't know why. I um, Take it as it resonates. Um, keeping tabs. Someone watches you. You watch someone being nosy, silent yet interested, private politics, someone won't stay away. This is someone, it feels like this is someone who's not brave enough to step up to the plate and actually choose you and choose this and do the work, but it's also someone who can't really let it go. So that is a draining energy. That is basically the definition of an energetic vampire on some level. Then you have familiar visitor. Someone surprises you. A past lover suddenly returns. A knock on the door. An unexpected time. Open or ignore. Someone feels unprepared. Okay, so for some of you, you definitely have someone coming back around. And this may be the ball is in your court to decide here. And it feels like there's some insider information coming through here that may be for you to help give help you navigate this situation you have childish play young love someone acting immature never grows up dating someone younger needs more time to mature surface level relationship you know i feel like you have someone who isn't capable of meeting you as deeply as you met yourself here pisces and they may be coming back around You know, I'm also getting with this no. This no is coming from a place of love. If you keep enabling someone, if you keep letting someone back in, if you keep giving someone something that they want without them earning it, without them doing the work that they need to do on themselves, you're you're sort of taking on their karma. Um and you're and they're importantly getting they're they're getting robbed the opportunity to kind of experience their karma. Um Pisces, you have self-worth and heartbreak here. You know, this, you know, it feels like this decision is some kind of reflection of how we feel about ourselves. And, um, you know, yes, we can keep putting ourselves back together again. We can, um, we can keep healing our heart. We can keep you know, um, you know, it's like, I kind of want to say learning, but it doesn't feel like learning. 
you know, when when we keep learning the same lesson over and over and over again, you know, we're we're repeating a karmic cycle. We don't have to do that. All we all we have to ever do is make a different choice and then we're in a different cycle. It is that easy. And so there is this thing of, you know, really asking ourself, you know, is this what I want? Do I really want to open myself up for another round of this? What makes me think it will be different? What makes me think that this, this is worth the risk? Um, I, I do feel like you have someone from your past coming back in pretty soon. But again, you guys, I have felt a lot. There is a new energy and I feel there is a new energy here even now still. Um, so it's kind of one of those things where it's like, here's your chance to make a different decision and to choose the love of yourself over the love of anyone else, you know? All right, let's like. What do you have for Pisces? Please, Spirit, what can you tell me for Pisces? What is this about for Pisces? Can I get one more? What is this about for Pisces? No? Okay. You have the moon card on the bottom of the deck. There's something that you're, you don't see or there's sub, something in the subconscious here that is playing a significant role. It's the thoughts. Pisces, this keeps coming out. It just keeps coming out. Um, you got the high priestess with the five of swords. The five of swords is, is a direct threat to the high priestess, right? Um, fives are really like blockages. They are change through obstacle. So there's kind of this energy here of, um, especially with the moon card, these thoughts are existing in our subconscious. This is where mantra work is so powerful. It changes our narrative and, the, and it changes the narrative that we don't even know, we're not even aware of. Um, and really guided meditation can really help with this. Um, but also just consciously choosing your mantras, constantly choosing what you're telling yourself, you will reprogram your subconscious. Um, I do guided meditations as I'm drifting off to sleep and first thing in the morning because in that state you are the most sort of relaxed in order to really allow transformation to take place in order to not you know have that thinking mind be super active um you're just really receptive and pliable at that time so i do guided meditations you can record them for yourself um or there are some really good ones on youtube and um there's just this energy here of with the five of swords, you know, our thoughts defeat ourself. Okay. So even if we get a message from our highest and best self, from our intuition, right? And our intuition says, Hey, you know, nothing's really changed here, but our mind is like, well, let me just see, let me just hear the person out. Let me just talk with this person and let me just see if maybe my intuition is wrong. And you know, this person tells you what they want to hear. If you've been through a lot of cycles with this person, this person knows you well enough to know what you need to hear or what they need to say in order to gain access that they're looking to gain. Um, and, you know, this is, you know, a lot of times it's hard for us to tell just how much progress we have made when it comes to healing. And it, it, it usually, we find out when we are faced with the same obstacle or the same struggle how far we have come. Um, and in fact, let me read this to you. My yoga teacher posted this yesterday on Facebook and uh, I thought it was just, it was something that I had to sit with for a moment. It is, this. Before you respond to someone, remember that your response is also an agreement to establish an energetic connection, which may change your energy field and vibrational frequency. Let me read it one more time, you guys. Before you respond to someone, remember that your response is also an agreement to establish an energetic connection 
which may change your energy field and vibrational frequency. When you know what you know and when your intuition is telling you something, um, you, you don't, you, you know, sometimes the best policy is, is to ignore it, is to walk away from it, is to not establish an energetic connection to it in the first place. You, you, it's not just, okay, well, I'll just hear this person out and then everything will be fine. And then I'll make my choice and then everything will be fine. If this person knows how to manipulate you or knows what to say to you to kind of woo you back, then hearing them out is a dangerous prospect, right? Because you may be strong, you may have healed, you may have done a lot of work on yourself, but if this person knows how to kind of get you where, you know, how to touch on the soft spots, how to woo you, how to win you back over, even if you say no and walk away, you're going to walk away with a lot of wondering in your head. So you got to ask yourself where you're at right now. Are you good with the way things are right now? Have you come to a place of peace and acceptance with where things are right now? Then you have a lot to risk by opening yourself up to what this person has to say. You see what I'm saying? So whatever choice or decision, you know, the high priestess is a two, there's a choice or decision coming here. And it is one that is going to reflect your subconscious state. Um, it is going to reflect to you the level of healing that you have done, the progress that you've made, where you're at. It's going to show it to you in a way where you can see it consciously. Um, all right, I'm going to clarify. Look at that nine of pentacles. Spirit keeps telling you, Pisces, you've worked hard to get where you're at. You have worked hard to get where you are at. The nine of pentacles is not an easy energy to come to. So you do have a lot at stake here. All right. The five of swords is clarified by the four of wands. You know that this is a spiritual connection. You know that this is a deep soul connection. You know that there is something here that is you know, deeper than the, you know, probably any other connection in your life. But with the nine of cups here, you, again, look, you have two nines showing up. This is the end of a cycle for you. And this is the end of a cycle for you where you can choose your own happiness. It isn't selfish. It isn't, you know, you're not... There's something coming across here where it's like, um, I owe it to the connection or I owe it to this person or I love this person or this person is my wish fulfillment. So, you know, there's this energy and with these two nines here, it is literally saying, you know, you're born you and you die you. You are the most important person in the equation every single time when it comes to you period end of story however you feel about this person whatever they once were whatever they represent to you even if they're a soulmate you got to remember we have a lot of soulmates out there and yeah with the four of wands could this be a twin flame situation sure i i like hope that you know by now where my standing is with twin flames it's i don't think that that's a necessarily healthy thought um for everyone you know some people can handle it and not feel like I have to be with this person because they're my twin flame. You don't have to be with anyone. You are an autonomous being. Um, your happiness begins and ends with you. Anything else that anyone else brings to it, it, they are bringing to it separate from where you are already at with yourself. Can you go from the Nine of Cups to the Ten of Cups with another person? Absolutely. But it has to be the right person in the right energy at the right time. You know, it can't just be anyone. And even if it is a deep soul connection, if they are in a state of self-loathing, if they are insecure, if they are not ready or able to step up to the connection, then it, it will, you know, it, it will 
probably teach you a lot of lessons, but be very painful and cause a lot of suffering as well. Um, so you have to decide that for yourself. And with the high priestess, you definitely have the capacity here, Pisces, to tap into your highest and best to make this decision. Um, with the nine of cups on the bottom of the deck and the nine of pentacles clarifying the high priestess, you're the one in the catbird seat. You're the one in the position where you have worked to get your own, you know, stability and strength and your own emotional contentment, you with you. And, you know, if this person is a real threat to that, you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? You know, is this something that I want to open myself up to? And what is this reflecting to me? What does this say about how I feel about myself? Because if, if we're not at a place where we love ourselves the most and we love ourselves enough to choose ourselves over someone that's going to wreak havoc and bring chaos into our life when we've worked really hard to get ourselves to a certain place, then, you know, there, there's an opportunity there for our own growth. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's, you're at a choice point here for sure. You're having one coming in. You have the two of wands and the three of cups, and you have the queen of pentacles on the bottom of the deck. How appropriate that she would be right here on top of the self-worth card. Um, you know, it's interesting to me because I almost feel like Pisces, some of you have a friend or someone in your life who really looks at you and just really sees the beauty and just really knows how lucky and how fortunate anyone is to have a real relationship with you. And I almost feel this energy of this person sort of saying, you know, feeling or saying or, you know, just, it feels like man, Pisces, if you could only see yourself through my eyes, you would understand what a gift you are or how fortunate anyone is to kind of come into contact with you. And your choice would reflect that. It, either, you know, this can be your spirit team, this can be angels, this can be your birth angel, this can be your spirit guide, this can be the divine. But it's just this really beautiful, benevolent energy of you know, if you could just see yourself the way that I see you, you know, if, if you could release these thoughts and this inner turmoil or this, you know, programmed sort of thing that's in there, these self-defeating thoughts, really, it feels like, um, it's like your choices would always reflect that. And even if you were alone, you would be happy because you would have made that choice on purpose that you're not just opening up to anyone. And I do think that that is sort of innately a Piscean trait is that while you guys are very unconditionally loving, unconditional love is a tremendous gift and it is a tremendous thing to open yourself up to um, because you can be hurt, you can be rejected, you can um, give it to someone who can't give it back to you. Uh, you, you can experience a lot of things being an unconditional lover. And I think as a Pisces, sometimes it brings you to a place where you can be very reticent to try to give it to someone because of all the times you have been let down. Not everyone is capable of unconditional love. Not everyone is capable of receiving unconditional love, let alone giving it. So there, but it does feel Pisces, you are unconditionally loved by someone either here in the material world or, you know, somewhere. And there is just this energy of, I, I what is that song? Ooh, child, things are gonna get easier. I'm hearing that song. Uh, I have no idea what that is. But anyway, um, I just feel this real benevolent spirit just, you know, or energy around you. Like, um, look at yourself, imagine yourself, see yourself through my eyes, and then you will know, you know, um, that you are loved and you are love itself. Um, it's just, wow, it's crazy. 
Okay, um, with the Queen of Pentacles, this is about, you know, self-worth and it is about nurturing our own abundance and having gratitude for what we really already have in our life, even for ourselves. You know, one thing that we oftentimes forget to be grateful for is our health and our, our just our physical well-being. Um, a lot of times, you know, until you're sick, you forget to be thankful, be grateful for that. Um, you know, and so I don't know why that's coming up here, but it is. And so, you know, it may even be something where it's like add it to your list, Pisces, another thing to be grateful for, or, you know, if you haven't, or, you know, possibly even, um, to focus on that or to add something in that place. And, you know, health isn't, like a lot of times we just, we have this idea of health of it being like, you got the flu or you don't have the flu. You got a headache or you don't have a headache. You got something wrong with you or you don't. No, this is like, it is body, mind and spirit. And it is nurturing all of those. And it is nurturing all of those kind of equally. And like, what are we really doing? Where, where do we stand with that? Are we telling ourselves tomorrow I will? You know, or are we today creating time for it? Are we t today saying, I am important. My life is important. What I'm doing here matters. I need to make time for these things. I need to make time to take care of my suitcase because without my suitcase, I'm not going anywhere. I need to make time to take care of my mental body because if my mental body is not in shape, I can't listen to my intuition and I can't feel the divinity within me and I can't you know, operate from my highest and best self. Um, and, um, and I need, and most of the time with the mind, it is really just, um, letting things go, you know, um, it is, it is reprogramming. It is that guided meditation mantra energy, right? And spiritually, you know, everybody's spirituality is different, but how are we you know, showing our gratitude and our thanks for this beautiful experience that we're getting being a spiritual being in this human condition. I'm going to clarify these. Yeah. There's something here that's hard to really let go of. Man, Pisces, this reading, whoa, whoa, whoa. With the Seven of Cups clarifying the Three of Cups, the Three of Cups is that energy of that benevolent spirit that is like wanting you to look at yourself through their eyes. With the Seven of Cups, it's like enhancing that. It's just like even trying to get you to see all the possibilities. If you saw yourself in this way, w w your limitations would just be removed. It's like you you would then see what is all available and open to you in this life. All the options, all the possibilities. You would dream bigger, not lesser. You know, it's almost like the energy of someone who has gotten their hopes up and then things haven't worked out. And so little by little, they've given up ground on hope. And hope was one of your angel cards at the beginning of this reading. Um, but, it, you know, when when you get your hopes up and then it doesn't happen, time after time, it's like, you don't want to get your hopes up because you don't want to be disappointed again. This is like saying, if you could see your, this is a very spiritual energy, even if it is someone in the material world, there's something very spiritual about this. Um, that if you could see yourself the way that I see you, you would see an opening instead of a closing. Instead of giving up ground on hope, you your hope would be magnified bigger than it has ever been before. Like you, your aspirations, your dreams, your what you were looking at, looking for, would be limitless. You know, your there could be no end to the daydream. There could be no end to all the possibilities of what could be out in front of you. And, you know, with the nine of wands, it is this message of, you know, getting your hopes up and getting disappointed, having these desires and one by one, those desires becoming burdens, those desires sort of either being hopes that were disappointments that turned into disappointments 
or you know um things that just didn't pan out and now it's like we have this wall around us of all of those things and we have this one kind of like matchstick left is how it feels to like light our soul on fire and it's like are you going to use it to choose something that's hard for you to let go of or something that may have already even let you down something that you may have already survived and gotten to the other side of or are you going to let it be the first step in a brand new journey you know where it's like i have not given up this desire i have not given up this hope i am just it's almost like page of wandsing it you know I'm, I'm just i'm taking this one from the nine and i'm saying okay this is my new beginning you know this is my choice moving forward this is what i desire and what is it going to be with the two of wands and the nine of wands um again you have now three nines that have shown up in your reading so there's definitely an ending on the bottom of the deck here you have the queen of swords which is you know lady discernment this is, you know, everything that hasn't worked out for you has only made you smarter and has only made you wiser and more informed. It has made you, you sharpened your mental acumen to see the things that are for you and that are not for you, the things that are legitimate and the things that are full of bullshit. You have that ability here because of what you have been through. And um, this is a superpower. It is a, it is something that, you know, if you trust and if you listen, it will to guide you. It, it will probably very much agree with your high priestess, your intuition. It will back your intuition. All right. Lots of queens coming out here, Pisces. And, you know, lots of queens usually means we're approaching Empress energy. Pisces, there is someone from your past. They are definitely a soulmate. I feel like they're coming in. I feel like they want another chance. You have the four of wands and judgment with the six of cups on the bottom of the deck. This is someone from your past, a soulmate. Um, and this is something, it can be something that you yourself have manifested with the four of wands. Um, it can be where, you know, because the four of wands can be where we have called something down from the ethers into reality. You know, um, and I, you know, please keep in mind this is a general reading and just to take what resonates and to leave the rest. But you know how sometimes you think, I want this, I want this, I want this, I want this. And then you get it and you're like, man, why did I want this? Why did I work so hard to get this? This is not what I thought. Or, um, you know, we're like, just let me have one more conversation with this person. If I could just have one more conversation with this person, I could convince them. And in the process, in the time in between, you have changed, you've evolved, and then you're sitting in front of that person, and that person is talking to you. And what was once attractive and acceptable, or a red flag but overlookable, it's like it becomes the only thing that you can see, it becomes the only thing that you can hear. And you go, wait a minute, why did I want this so bad? Why was I working so hard to manifest it? You know, if you're manifesting a particular person and you end up in a space of closure, you know, that can be the luckiest thing that could happen to you. It, I'm not saying that across the board in all cases, that's what's happening here. Um, this is definitely a relationship where there are a lot of tender feelings and a long, probably storied history here. And for some of you, this could be the part where it works out. You know, it, it, you could have already been through the part where you had to make a choice and you chose yourself instead of this person and now this person is coming back around you gave them the opportunity to experience their own karma and to learn and to grow and to choose that and now they're coming back around and now they're prepared to really they're ready to answer the call of this relationship and actually really show up you know this is a general reading so there's a lot of things here but definitely the beginning part of this reading I feel very, very strongly there is someone who's been in and out of your life who it's like there just comes a point where you have to say enough is enough, you know, because they're really tearing you apart from the inside out. That just came back to me again. All right, here we go. Wow. 
I'm just going to tell you guys, if this is a case where it has happened that you have already made this decision, where you have already told this person, I'm sorry, I choose myself, and now this person is showing up, it can be here where you're getting a lot of sixes as well, and this is coming into unity, coming into harmony. So with the King of Pentacles, the Lovers, and the uh, Ace of Pentacles here, there will be, if this person is really showing up in a legitimate energy where they are saying, you know what, I choose you, I realize and I recognize this is a deep soul connection and there is no one else for me but you. I have had to rise up to meet the occasion. You have shown up already in this reading as the Queen of Pentacles, Pisces, and now this person is showing up as the King of Pentacles. They had to ri rise up to meet your vibrational level in order to have this opportunity to even make this choice, to even come to you and to even offer you something. If this is the case, this person is going to offer you something solid and stable. This person is going to offer you something that I feel like they have not offered you before. And they are going to show you a level of stability and strength that they also have not shown you before. This is a level of commitment to this choice that I feel like has been typically missing or was missing at least in the beginning, they're going to be showing up almost like leading with this energy of here's how committed I am to making this work. It's not this, you're not getting swords here, you're getting pentacles. I'm showing up, I'm showing up in reality, I'm showing up in real life, I am offering you this specific thing. And, you know, I, I, I want you to know that above all others, I am choosing you. For some of you, it's almost like if you were really young when you met this person, there's almost this energy of like, I wasn't ready. You know, I hadn't matured into my energy and that I did hurt you a lot. I did put you through a lot of pain. I did, um, you know there is something there and it is like you there the maturity of this person has deeply changed on such a level that you can feel it energetically but it is also like if you're having a conversation with this person even the way that they're talking even the things they're talking about even what how they have changed their life or built their life or how they're moving things around in their life it's showing you that like this person is in a different space <laughs> you know they're in a different energy they're in a different phase of their life they're they're somebody who feels that they are ready to make a commit a serious commitment and actually really show up and honor the level of this connection okay so let me go one more here Wow, Two of Swords, the Magician, and the Knight of Pentacles. So Pisces, with the Two of Swords, this is telling me to like, you, you now have three twos. So there is like a big decision that is happening here. There's a big choice. There's a big connection, you know, coming in. Um, the Two of Swords can sometimes represent to me to like take that breath to make space where you are not, you know, when you're looking at someone that you have feelings for, it's really hard for you to look at them and be honest with yourself because you have almost like a chemical release that happens when you're looking at someone that you have deep feelings for. Um, and part of the Two of Swords is that blindfolded energy and that, you know, the swords are crossed across the heart. And so this is almost like that meditative breath of, okay, let me not respond with my eyes saying this is what, you know, I have envisioned, this is what I've wanted for so long. Let me not respond with my heart. My heart will always hold a weakness for this person. My heart will always tell me to say yes to this person. Let me take a breath and let me just see what comes to me. I'm with the um, magician here and the Knight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck. There is this energy of reminding yourself that you are empowered and that, you know, you, there is always the opportunity to transmute things in this life or to alchemize things in this life. Take nothing and turn it into something or take something and turn it into something else. But we have to rise into our kind of like highest and best, most empowered state in order to do this, in order to become the, the alchemist. 
and it feels like here, you know, it's like, am I ready to do this? Do I see that quality in this person in front of me? You know, have we both got the tools at our disposal that will be necessary to make this work? I know with the Knight of Pentacles on the bottom of the deck, it isn't about a race to the finish line. It isn't about, oh my God, I've missed you. Like, I need to breathe you in. I need this moment with you. It is about, okay, where do we go from here? Let's plot it out. Let's plan it out. Let's take slow and steady steps in the right direction. Let's not get this thing out in front of us. Let's not get the cart pulling the horse. Let's be the night that crosses the finish line. Let's just take a step in the right direction. Let's agree to one thing right now. And then let's agree to another thing. And then let's agree to another thing. And let's stay on the same page and let's sync up and let's see how this works, how this thing can come together. A lot of pentacles here, Pisces, something is materializing in the real world. This is not in our thoughts. This is not just energetically. This is something that is, um, you know, coming into the material world. All right, let me get you guys some messages. And I'm just going to remind you one more time while I'm looking at these angel cards. If you are interested in um, winning a, a deck, an angel deck of this deck right here that was so graciously sent to me by the creator, um, please put a comment about the angel cards or angels in the comments of this video and the next two videos. Each, each comment you make will be a chance to win. Um, and if you are a subscriber, it, your comment will count as two. All right. And I will be announcing it in a community post who won the Deck. and I will get your address and I will mail it to you. Um, also, you have to be in the continent, in the United States. Okay, I'm so sorry. I know I do have people watching from other countries. I wouldn't even have the first clue about how to send this and these decks have already gotten lost once in France and so I'm going to just limit it to the United States. Okay. All right. If you're dealing with a water sign. You're getting regret. Someone feels remorse for the way they treated you. Warning, don't dismiss the red flags here. You were the best thing in my life. I want you. I have too much to lose. Unavailable. This person is unable to give you all you deserve. All right. If you're dealing with a fire sign, You're getting support, lean on your inner circle during this time. I feel so drawn to you. I miss seeing you, I am recovering, I won't let you down. And I know I was a distraction from your pain. If you're dealing with an earth sign, I can't reach out. Play hard, find time to laugh, goof off and enjoy each other. Stability, this relationship can stand the test of time and I can't be with you and I hide behind material things. If you are dealing with an air sign, you are getting time apart. Some distance will help bring clarity. Um, I know that I crossed the line with you. I don't react when people mention you. We both know I'm not the one for you. I look for you everywhere. Boundaries, firm boundaries are needed now. Obstacles, unhealed wounds are blocking forward movement and we don't share the same values. All right, Pisces. Well, I hope this reading was super helpful. Again, if you are in the United States and you would like to win um, an angel deck, uh, just make sure you're a subscriber and comment in this video or the next two videos and each time it will be an entry to win unless you're a subscriber and that will be i mean a member of my membership channel and then you will have two um entries to win all right so thank you all so much until next time guys i send you off with all my very best always 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 bye bye